Happy Holidays! Today I'm going to show you how to paint a warm glow with a wet on wet wash. This is a picture of a lamp post covered with snow. We're going to make it look really pretty. I start by putting wax free graphite paper underneath my photo and going over the main outlines. You can draw your picture if you'd like, or trace and copy. Either one will work out just the same. Since I'll be working wet on wet and it's a little bit messy, I'm going to use some masking fluid. I like PBO masking fluid since it thins with water. And I'm using an old inexpensive craft brush to mask out the area I want to save white. I put the masking on and you need to make sure that it's completely dry. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a glow around this lamp post, somewhere right around in there. I want to work on a wet surface so I'm evenly wetting the paper. I dump on lots of water and then I tilt the paper so I can see if I've missed any spots and to let the extra water run off. A wet on wet wash may seem difficult but with just a little bit of practice you'll get the hang of it. We're starting with some lemon yellow And around the lemon yellow, I'm putting some permanent rose. That little layer of red around the yellow gives you a buffer zone because yellow and blue tend to make green. And I really don't want the glow around this lamp to be green. But I do want the background to be a pretty color blue. Today I'm using cerulean blue and phthalo blue. The two of them make a wonderfully beautiful blue. It works well for skies and many different things. I start with the cerulean blue at the top and put the darker thalo blue along with a little bit of red at the bottom. I would really like a little bit of a graded wash from light to dark. Since the paper's wet, the paint kind of floats around on top. So I'm going to tilt the paper and use a misting bottle to add a little bit of moisture to help mix the two colors. You notice it's running a little bit. We're getting a touch of green there. So I immediately get the green up with the paper towel. But the blue is already starting to mix on the paper. When you're working wet on wet, you have to use a lot more paint than you do on dry paper in order to get a good saturated color once it dries. Watercolors all tend to dry lighter and wet on wet washes dry especially lighter. I have dark blue at the bottom and I put a little dark blue around the edges at the top and let that blend in. As long as you keep the area evenly wet you can continue to work on things And if it runs too much, just dab it up with a paper towel. I notice that a lot of my red has disappeared. So a little more dark blue. And I'm going to put a little more red back in there. The water is doing most of the work of blending these colors. The red down here mixes with the blue and makes more of a purple, but it'll be fine. Now that that is drying, but not completely dry, I'm using my white opaque paint. It's actually a white ink. What I use is called Pro White and an old toothbrush 
and I'm spattering some white into the drying wash. This is kind of hit or miss. When you spatter paint into a drying wash, sometimes a lot of it just kind of dissolves and disappears. So I'll give it a minute and see how it does. When you spatter white into the drying wash, you're going to end up with some fairly soft edges. I'm going to dry it a little bit. And you can see a lot of the white is disappearing. I wanted my snow to stand out a little more than that. So I'm going to spatter it again. Now that that's dry, I'm going to peel off the masking. I'm just using my thumb. You can get an inexpensive thing called a misket remover. But either way works fine. Masking will lift up your pencil lines. So I didn't bother to draw any of the detail until now. I've got my reference photo printed out and I'm just drawing in the snow and the garland. But you could place your photo back over top and trace it with the graphite paper if you'd like. Now I'm switching to a small brush. This is a size 6. And this is cerulean blue and clean water. Cerulean blue at the bottom where the snow is and clean water just above it. When you add clean water, it pushes the cerulean down towards the shadow side. And the cerulean by itself makes excellent shadows on snow. You see me repeat that several times, blue and water. Already this picture is looking pretty. The bottom is all snow. I'm just kind of futzing in some different colors and throwing in some water. Almost anything you do is going to end up looking like snow. Just try not to be too careful. Okay, now we can go back and fill in the glow. I filled it in with yellow. You could leave some of the area white if you'd like. And I'm mixing the yellow and the blue to make green for the garland. The cerulean, some of it's still, still wet and it may blend in a bit. But I don't mind some soft edges. A garland usually has pretty spiky edges. And some of these are futzing out and looking a little bit flat to me. So I take my pencil and just scratch the surface of the paper. The paint goes right into that scratch and you end up with some darker darker smears. Up, oh, you see the paint I got up there? Not that you guys would ever do that, but once it's up there, you can re-wet it with clean water, lift up as much as you can, and I'll paint that over with white at the end. 
The red bow adds such a nice touch. Many artists will tell you that every picture needs a little bit of red. And I also mix all three colors together to get kind of a neutral shade to make the lamp post. You can make a purple and add yellow. Anything just so you have a little bit of a neutral color for your lamp post in the shadow. I use the thalo blue plus red and a little bit of yellow to make a black. For the framework of the lamp, creating your own black, make sure that it will match the rest of the colors in your picture. And that very dark black against the very light yellow gives a great center of interest. Now my cerulean blue on the snow has just about faded out to nothing. So I put on one more layer, blue and water. I put a few shadows in the red and I use white to put in a little bit of a light and a little bit of light on the top of the snow. I mix an orange to go in the center of that light. And you can throw on, you can use your white anywhere that your snow isn't as light as you'd like. You can also use your white to correct anything you might do by accident. Once that dries, I'll put a little yellow over it. And you'll never know it was there. I'll put some highlights. And there we have a glowing Christmas light to welcome all your friends and neighbors. Happy painting.